Hi everyone, my name is Dennis, and I thought it was about time that someone put together a tutorial on things to look for when looking for rendering software for SketchUp. Now it's going to be pretty general, and it will be based on what I think is important. So of course, others will have different opinions. I'm going to do the best I can to give a list of things I think people should think about before buying any piece of rendering software. Some things may be more or less important to some, but again, this is just meant to help new users, or even pro users for that matter, know what to at least think about. So a couple of big things people think about when looking at rendering software are quality, speed, and price. Those things are very, very important, but they are also somewhat subjective. Things like user interface, uh, integration into SketchUp, and customer support are equally as important and slightly less subjective. Firstly, is the renderer integrated into SketchUp? Meaning, does it work inside of SketchUp, or do you have to export it into another program? When the renderer is built into SketchUp, it just streamlines the process. It also allows you to use the SketchUp materials, textures, uh, sun, shadow, uh, scenes, and a bunch of other settings. And there's no need to jump back and forth to the different programs. Also, how do you edit the materials? You should just be able to either left or right click on what you want to edit. And then if you have questions, who's there to help you? Does the render have a good help system? Or do you have to email or call every time you have a question? Are there forums or some other websites out there that you can get help? This may not seem important at first, but they really are something that needs to have thought given to them, especially in the long term. Okay, now I want to go over a few more specific examples of features your render should be able to do. So here's a little simple model I put together for use in this video, and I'll be loading it up to the 3D warehouse if you want to download it and try it on the render of your choice for yourself. Just search for how to choose a renderer. So first, I want to render this whole model as you see it now and point out a couple things. And so here it is. As you can see, not a lot has changed, and that's kind of the whole point. The rendering should look about the same. I used all normal SketchUp objects and materials in this model, and as you can see, they all rendered just fine, including the fence, the wood on the door, the transparent material in the door, the grass, and all the trees, and of course the house. This showcases how well a render should handle basic SketchUp materials and geometry. Very, very important. So now I want to talk about this house. This house I made using Photomatch. Some renders can't handle images well or even at all. This example will answer if yours can or not. This is a good test for images because the image of this house has been distorted and skewed, uh, scaled, and rotated. If your render can handle this, then the results should look just like you see it in SketchUp. Let me show you. And then this is what it looks like when it's rendered. Nothing too crazy here. And then I quickly want to talk about this clock here. This is an alpha transparent image and has been imported as a true image, not a texture like this house has been. And then here's what it looks like when rendered. And as you can see, it renders just as you would expect. So the next thing I want to talk about is another example of an alpha transparent image. So we'll just move to this next scene here. So here's an alpha transparent image of this tree that I have set up to always face me. <clears throat> These type of trees are common, so it's important to know whether or not your renderer can handle this. And the reason why alpha transparent images are important is because it allows you to see through certain parts of an image, like this tree, so I can see in between all these leaves here, which just adds a nice level of detail. So let me show you what mine looks like when rendered. And then here it is. Again, not much change from the SketchUp window, but you may notice how the shadow now accurately represents the tree. Okay, so next over is this goofy little well I made in order to talk about double-sided surfaces. And sometimes you may wish to put two different materials on a single surface like I've done here. Brick on one side, stone on the other. And let me show you what it looks like when rendered. And here it is, two different materials on the different sides of the same surface, as well as some transparent water here. But the point here is that the renderer should accurately render whatever you have done in SketchUp. Okay, so now let's move from exterior shots to interior shots. I'm just going to do that by clicking on this tab. And by the way, these same tabs will be here for you if you want to download this and try it out on your own. So there's a couple of different ways we could look inside this model right now, both of which are very important to know whether or not your renderer can handle them. One of the easiest ways is just to hide the roof, but another way would be to apply a section plane to the part of the house that you want to look at. And I just so happen to have that set up over here. So I've hidden the roof, as well as applied a section plane, which allows us to see inside this room very easily. Hiding something isn't all that tricky, but section planes can be a little bit more difficult. Now let me render this and show you what it looks like. 
But you can see how well this worked. We can see inside this house very well now. And like I said, a section plane is set up here, but SketchUp will only let you see one at a time. However, a good renderer will let you see all section planes you have at once. Okay, so that's pretty much it. There are some other things you might want to think about, but not all renderers have. Things like libraries for plants and lights and textures and materials. Those things can be really, really helpful, but not every user will need them. And of course, there's lots of settings um, in each renderer that can affect the quality of a rendering. So that's just something you'll have to play around with. I encourage people to try out some different renderers and try to balance out all these things that I went over and see which one works best for you. And of course, there's no right answer. Also, a couple great places to check out are sketchucation.com, which is a great forum with lots of really helpful people and advice. And then also check out Google's own plugin page. Scroll down a little bit and you'll find a list of some of the different renderers out there. Like I said, make sure to go to the 3D warehouse and search for how to choose a renderer. Download this model and try rendering these scenes in any rendering software of your choice. If everything renders with no problem, well then great. But if not, you might want to think about trying out another renderer that is able to render the things I went over. Alright, that's going to do it for me for now. Thanks.